Welcome back to round two. You probably didn't get to see round one, but um, Paul, you know what I hate about Windows? My father. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I lost track of the script. What, what, I'm sorry. What, what is that, Brad? So, Paul, right before the show, as you can attest, I've already told this story to Paul about 10 seconds ago. Uh, installed a Windows update, and following that, this little thing that I use over here to control the screens, which is just a number pad, USB, no longer worked. And so I had to unplug it, plug it back in. Now it works. But mm -hmm. also, for whatever reason, my default microphone was switched, and so if I would have played back the original script or show, you mm -hmm. would have just heard a faint Brad rather than stereo DB Brad. Right. So I'll leave out the Harry Potter joke I made in the original version of this podcast, but the short version <laughs> is, uh, once again, supports my contention that computer science is not a science, is in fact black magic, because the logic of ones and zero should always work. We should be able to figure anything out, make it consistent, make it the same every time, and it, 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 it's never like that. And I, it's getting really frustrating. Further proof is you appear to be in HD today. Sure, why not? It's uh, Monday. Um, who do I... Right, and I'll I'll get onto a call later today, and my mm -hmm. microphone won't work, and you know, it's not like I'm sitting there plugging and plugging and screwing around and seeing what happens when you make changes. Like nothing, I don't touch anything. It's, it's just, unbelievable. Just the way it is. Um, Paul, do you know what I did this weekend? <laughs> no, I was a little absorbed in my own pain. But what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing you're not bitter about the weekend with your father. Um, it's going to take a while for me to get over this, but please continue. I bought a bed. Oh, nice. Which one did you get? I don't even know. Um, did you like actually go to a store? No, we did go to a store, and we bought one. It'll be here in a week. Um, it, and it's we didn't do the bed and the boxing because my wife wanted to lay in a bed, which I totally get. And uh, they had yeah. A, yeah. what they consider comparable foam mattresses. Um, fortunately, I think it's probably a good thing we didn't because I – I would like a wood plank and my wife would like to sleep on a cloud and we had to find a way to meet in the middle. Um, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, how much was this thing? Because mattresses are incredibly expensive. Oh, they are. They absolutely are. So let me qualify this because we uh, mm -hmm. what, what sold us on this particular thing, which had nothing to do with the mattress, we actually paid more money for mm -hmm. like the bed, like those old timey people, like Rotates oh, yes, around. like a hospital bed. So half of it can go up or down, and the other half can be some other. Yeah. I'll tell you what, laying on your back and being able mm -hmm. to lift your legs up just about six inches. Sure. It, Pretty all good. The, all the difference, all the difference in the world. Um, mm. That bed, that the thing to do that. Now, granted, they, they had ones, and my wife was like, we're not buying that. And I was like, eh. um, <laughs> they had ones that had lights under it and USB ports mm -hmm. built in. <laughs> like, I'm not uh, even joking. Brown. Like ground massage. effect lighting yeah we got it's like, a, basic... like a, an airstrip pointing to the bed like this is how you get there from the bathroom pretty well the idea is that when you stand up in the middle of the night there's sensors that just turn on an underglow under the bed so you don't rack your shins and my wife said you know what you can rack your shins all you want um but um we spent... if there's a serial killer in the house you'll have that one moment of confusion like why are the lights on Exactly. So we spent, uh, it was like 2,700 bucks for oh, everything. Oh, jeez. Yikes. Yeah. Even in the context of mattresses, that's expensive. Wow. Well, the, the problem was, is that the mattress itself was only like 1,500 bucks, but then we spent okay. another like 1,000 on... On the app. On the app, on, on the thing that, that raises and lowers the bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But, okay. Yeah. So it was a big... Yeah. I mean, I, I bought that Casper thing, but it was only like 1,000 bucks. I didn't get the... Like the really nice one. Yeah. And that was like all in, including delivery, hollowing away of our mm -hmm. old stuff. Some guy cutting my grass while he's here. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we will wow. see. Nice. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, we'll, we'll see. Um, speaking of $1,000, we're going to get to see whatever <laughs> this thing. Whatever they're called. Because, my God, have there been like 117 different contradictory rumors, especially about the names of these things and mm -hmm. the prices. You know, Wednesday's going to be a big day. I'm going to wake up by uh, going to the dentist, mm -hmm. and then I'll come back by, um, I don't know, probably... Oh, you'll get hurt twice, once in your mouth and once in your wallet. Oh, don't worry. The dentist can absolutely wreck your wallet, too. So, <laughs> Although this is just my semi-annual cleaning, so I'm hoping that he's not yeah. going in there and telling me I need dental surgery. But um, Sure. Yeah. So... Semi-related to this, um, I'm, I'm probably not going to write about this because I, I, I'm kind of not a big fan of linking to these kind of YouTube video blogger goobs, but 
Um, there are these people that make like, you know, like Gordon Kelly's like this guy just like writes FUD on Forbes and mm-hmm. just writes incredible baloney about whatever. So there are guys that go on YouTube and do this. And it's like the, um, like they hate everything. It's like, you're not going to want to buy the iPhone 10, this piece of crap, you know, and it's always got these like crazy graphics. It's like a guy yep. standing in front of a green screen kind of thing. So this, this, one of these guys has been crapping all over the Pixel 3 XL, which, you know, frankly, given what we've seen of it with the gigantic notch and, and whatnot, you know, kind of makes some sense. And um, he was contacted by Google. And they were like, listen, we'd like to use a specific clip from your podcast in this event we're going to have next month. So he's not allowed to say which clip it was, but he said, I, only, I have only crapped on this thing. Yeah, and he showed some examples of this, and it's it's pretty clear cut. It, he thinks it looks ridiculous, which mm-hmm. I would agree. Then he found out from some other guys who do what he do, does that they were also approached for Google by Google for the same reason. They also have only crapped on his phone. Why would Google want to use clips from these guys to promote a phone? Like, if the phone is what they were showing, mm-hmm. why would they be like, look, all these people were making fun of it, and here it is, that thing they were showing. So his theory, and I, I, and again, I'm not like an Alex Jones conspiracy theory type guy, but I have to say, this is slightly compelling, is that that phone that's been leaking all over the place was leaked on purpose, and that's not what the phone looks like. That this thing mm. doesn't have a gigantic notch, that it has no bezels, and that it's actually going to be really elegant looking. Now, obviously, there's a part of me that wants to believe that this is true. But my, the reason this kind of goes over the top for me is, if you were to look at, I, I can't really show this to you, but I'll try. If you were to look at any um, phone that does have a notch, and I'm trying to, well, this is maybe not a great example. Hopefully you can see this. So this is a OnePlus 60, right? And yep. if you look at the notch, you'll see that it is just high enough to cover the, the notification icons at the top. Mm-hmm. That it, it, it does extend a tiny bit below that, but it's not double the height of that, right? Yeah. So the point of that is that Android is being... Uh, modified so that that notification strip at the top has the icon split out to both sides so that nothing's ever under the notch. But all the pictures of the Google Pixel 3 XL shows a notch that's literally twice as tall as that, meaning that it extends much further into screen and it would, in fact, block content in an app depending on what it was. But that doesn't make any sense because Google does not, in Android 9, accommodate a notch that does that. And if you can look at any picture of the Google Pixel 3 XL, you'll see it. It, it goes way down. And I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I have no inside yeah. knowledge of this. I, I, but I, and I, I listen. I, I'm kind of anti-conspiracy theory of any kind. But it's, this is an interesting theory. It'll be the greatest trolling by a company in modern it, times. Yes. It, it would be hilarious. Yes. How amazing would that be? Like someone left it in a lift on purpose. Right. Left it in a lift. You know, someone was riding the subway using the thing and letting pictures, people take pictures of them using it. You know, yep, it could it, literally be an elaborate hoax. It could be. And it could be, it would be a great marketing thing if somebody came up with it. And then as we get closer to the event, you just start seeing these things all over the place. It's like, oh, look, so, somebody left one in McDonald's. It's just everything. It is perhaps, I guess I just, to uh, be clear, I mean, it's perhaps more likely that that notch is real and that I don't know how Google handles it, but it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, mm-hmm. it, so we'll see. That's yeah, all. We'll we will see. see. Um, we will find out what that's October 9th. Microsoft's mm-hmm. event is October 2nd. Apple's event is the 12th. Is that what it is? Yeah. Did we, uh, We I think we did last week, talk about the Microsoft event. Yeah, we a did. When you yeah. remember you're sitting in a car in a Denny's parking lot. Oh, yes. The beginning of my 17 hours of hell. Um, it's good that you blocked yeah. that out. Oh, that was such a it was such a good moment before I knew how it was all going to go south. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, uh, this <laughs> it's weird. I, I've seen kind of speculation online about this event. It's like, oh, well, you know, what's going on with this mysterious Microsoft mm-hmm. event? It's not that mysterious. They announce uh, new hardware every October now. Um, you know, we, as we discussed, I mean, I think it's going to be a combination of things. Um, uh, existing form factors updated, overdue. Everyone knows that. Windows 10, new versions coming out. Makes sense. You know, at the last Surface event, we spent some time in, uh, I'll call it a pavilion, but whatever you want to call it, where we're... Yep. I went from station to station and looked at stuff. I mean, I think, I don't think there's anything mysterious about it. I mean, I guess in the sense that we don't know exactly what they're going to announce, there's some mystery to it, but, you know, fall is the time for new hardware, so. Yeah, I'll probably do a write-up on Petri just to say that I wrote something about it, but, um, yeah. 
if you're expecting well, big things from Surface, I, I would lower those expectations. Well, uh, the other thing maybe to look at it uh, from a different perspective perhaps is, you know, if you've been waiting on the current generation of devices, right, Surface Pro 2017, mm -hmm. um, Surface Laptop into two big ones, uh, Surface Studio is in kind of a different category, you know, and since we don't know which devices are being updated, it's hard, kind of hard to say. Uh, but those two in particular are kind of interesting because they're straightforward productivity machines. Um, I don't – well, I, okay, they would technically benefit from the addition of a quad-core processor. Mm -hmm. um, but there is – for straightforward productivity work, I mean, there's really no benefit to that. They are both excellent and recommended PCs. Yep. And would Microsoft, if, the, if, if as expected, they update both of them to the new generation chips – the existing ones are going to be on sale, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So if you've been kind of holding out, and there have been really good sales lately. Um, in fact, there might even be one still going on right now with the the bundle, mm -hmm. but on Surface Pro. But um, you know, for people who like to, it's kind of like buying the you know the the car just off of lease, or you yep. you know you don't buy the new car, you get the you know the one that's two to five years old, whatever. Um, the next couple month or two is going to be an excellent time, I believe to start thinking about the previous gen if you didn't buy one and have been kind of thinking about it. No, I mean, you can definitely find a good value right before the holidays. That is, uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be true. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, other things that are happening that, well, I, apparently this was written up by Mahedi in July and I just ignored it because it was related <laughs> to Skype. Um, <laughs> Apparently, Elder Microsoft in, has enabled, at least for me, read receipts today, but they're, like many things, Skype, pretty poorly implemented. Um, Paul sent me a message earlier today, and then, so Paul's messages appear on the left side. Uh, mm -hmm. Oops. My messages appear on the right side. And then there was a little Paul Therat head down below <laughs> his messages that said he, sure. he read some number of messages above the stream. I don't know. Um, oh, I can tell you this, though. You can turn it off. <laughs> And, and oh, I okay. And but well, but we should be clear too. So, you must be using Skype Skype eight point oh, or yeah, I'm using the, the desktop version, not the store app version. But it's the eight point oh version. Yes. Like you actually did the upgrade. Okay, yep. so I'm still using seven X because um, I am that kind of a luddite now with Skype. I'm afraid to do anything because the one time I made the change, nothing worked. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not going to appear in this app, right? So seven X is not going to get this thing. I, uh, I believe which that is, is correct. Perhaps another excellent reason to stick with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> you know, it, it, I was talking to Mary Jo this morning because she messaged me as soon as she saw me tweeting about it, mm -hmm. and uh, we were joking that everyone else in the world for read receipts uses a blue check mark or a check mark. Microsoft thought, nah, why, why, why go with the standard quo here? And yeah, uh, display another kind of t uh, 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 pop up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like. Just appears a... differently than others. Yep. <laughs> Specific. Oh, jeez. Oh, well. Well, maybe Skype. they'll undo that in 2019 when they undo everything they did in 2018 like they've done mm -hmm. with everything in 2017. Right, right. We decided to create the next version of Skype using Win32 technologies. The greatest technologies to ever exist in the computing world. Mm -hmm. Increasingly, it seems so. <laughs> Well, I think we can all agree it's not a universal app. And yet it does work universally across all versions of Windows. Yeah. It's, in it's interesting how you can build an app for a specific platform and it's just fine. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. Maybe they should call that one strategy instead of one core. <laughs> or dot .NET or something. Oh, well. <laughs> or um, <laughs> or web app. Or... Yeah. Yeah. All right. You got anything else today, Mr. Uh, Happy Threat? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to spend the next day or two not having a complete meltdown. Um, no, I get a lot of work calls, but nothing that impacts anybody. Um, what about you? Well, I'm um, just thinking about my new bed that's going to arrive this weekend. My mm -hmm. daughter, who went bed shopping with us, by the way, could not understand the idea that you, you can pay for something today. And then oh, and not get it. And not oh. get it. Like she was on the bed, like saying, this is the one we're taking home. Right. And we're like, no. Um, cause the big thing is, is yeah, as weird as this. Is. Well, first off bed shopping is just terrible because they're like, come lay on this bed and act like you're sleeping while we stare at you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you're like, like, you guys mind turning around for a second? I, <laughs> I like well, to test a key scenario. Well, I mean, and I know we're not the, <laughs> the only parents in the world that have this happen, but right. I, right. I've said this before. We have a queen bed and we we bought a king, which mm -hmm. gives us so much more room. And my daughter just, of course, obviously crawled into the bed in the storm. She's like, look how much room I'm going to have now. I'm like, well, the idea is that you're not 
really sleeping in here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. A lot of disappointment for the daughter on that day. Well, it's got to be weird for her at least twice a week. She falls asleep in our mm -hmm. bed and I just pick her up and move her into the other bed. And she sure. sleeps in there all night. But um, I, I can't imagine like that sort of like time shift or like transportation happening to me every single night of the week where you just wake up in a different place. You fell asleep. It's like college. I'll all tell you about it, the next business trip. Let's experiment with that and see how you like it. <laughs> <Paul> <laughs> Someone would just see like me carrying a body out to a dumpster. <laughs> like, no, no, it's okay. We talked about it on a podcast. Yeah. Look, there's, there's evidence as Mary Jo is just filming. You yeah. just he told me, me it was fine. <laughs> yep. I laugh only because I could actually see it happening. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up today on a very awkward and weird note. And mm -hmm. uh, we will catch you right back here tomorrow on Tuesday. <laughs>